Hello everyone, welcome back to Atreya Crochet. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make flowers. We're continuing the Mother's Day gift idea theme and I know that a lot of mothers, I won't generalize, but a lot, a lot of mothers love their flowers. And so instead of giving them, purchasing a flower that will, you know, inevitably die, you can just crochet them a flower that will last as long as the material lasts, the yarn lasts. All right, so as you see here, I have various types, various sizes and colors. So this is just an example of, you know, being creative, okay? So you can make a small flower like this. If you wanna make it small, you'll start out by chaining 20, okay? You can make a medium flower, okay, like this one. And you would chain, start out by chaining 29. Notice that I changed the colors, okay? And I'll show you with, the, with today's demonstration where you can change your colors if you're interested in making a multicolor flower like this. Uh, and then here's an example of one where I kept the main color, but then I did a row, a last row of slip stitches to kind of give it that, I don't know, that cool effect on the end. But this is also a medium one in which I started out with a chain of 29. Okay, here's another one where I change colors. This one, totally accidental, but I realized just this morning that these are the colors of like irises, you know, with that yellow and kind of like lavender and purple. So yeah, purely accidental. Um, but yeah, it worked out. This is another example where I changed colors and this is a small one where I started out with chaining 20. But if you want to make a big one, then you can start out by chaining 59. Okay, and as you see, it creates many more petals and it's just much bigger. I also change colors, okay? So you'll see that a lot of these have tails. I left tails at the end, uh, just in case I wanna attach it to something. Stay tuned for next week's video where I'll show you how to attach it to something cool. I'm not gonna tell you what, you're just gonna have to wait and watch. Uh, but yeah, if you don't plan on attaching it to anything, then you can cut that down. It can just serve as, you know, decoration for your table or whatever. So, yeah, today we're going to be making flowers. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Let's get started. Things you will need, some yarn, obviously. And, you know, you only need one skein, but if you want to make it multicolor, then get as many colors as you plan on using, okay, to create your flowers. You need crochet hook. Your yarn will tell you what size. I'm going to use six millimeter, size J US. You need a pair of scissors. And almost at the end of, you know, making the flower, you're going to need a darning weaving tapestry needle to kind of sew it all together, if you will. Let's get started. All right, so in today's video, I'm going to be making a medium size. Remember, for the medium, you start out by chaining 29, okay? So we will begin with a slip knot wrap. Yarn around your finger like that, twist exchange. Wrap it around that way now. Pull this one over that one and off your finger while lifting up on the one on your finger. Insert your crochet hook and then pull to tighten. So now let's chain 29. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, nine more to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 28, and 29. All right, so this is what we have. 29 chains for the medium size. We're gonna put a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. This is the hook. This is the first chain from the hook. And this right here is the second. We're going to go in there and we're going to put a single crochet. Alright. So slice the icing. Well, we're not slicing the icing. We're just entering the stitch. I just like to say slice the icing. That will come later. Alright, so notice you don't yarn over. You just enter the chain like that. Now we yarn over. Pull through to the front for two loops. One, two. Yarn over and go through two one two in every chain across we're going to put a single crochet so don't yarn over just enter 
Now yarn over, pull through to the front for two loops. One, two, yarn over, go through two. One, two. Put one single crochet in every chain across and I will see you on the other side. All right, I've completed my row of single crochet. I have a total of 28 single crochet, okay? So row one is a row of single crochet. Why do I have 28 if I chain 29? Ah, because I crocheted into the second chain from the hook by passing one, okay? All right, row two, we'll start out by chaining three. One, two, three. That chain three counts for the single crochet, okay? So that's the single crochet on the end. That chain three is basically counted as a double crochet, okay? And it's for that single crochet. So see how those three chains are coming out of that single crochet on the end, okay? That's what you want. All right, so now we're gonna turn our work so we're looking at the back side now, and we're going to chain two more. So that chain three is basically a double crochet, and then we're going to chain two. One, two. All right. Now we're going to make double crochet. So we'll yarn over. We're going to skip the next two stitches. When I say next two, I know this can be confusing because different crocheters mean different things when they say next stitch. <laughs> um, what I mean is the actual next two stitches. This chain three counts for the first single crochet or the last single crochet of row one. So it's not the next stitch. The next stitch, in my opinion, from my perspective, is this one, okay? So we're gonna skip that one. We're gonna skip the one thereafter and in this one, okay? Technically the fourth single crochet over, because one, two, three, four, that's where we're going to make a double crochet, okay? So I yarn over, skip the next two, so I'm skipping one, two, and in this third one over, okay, that's where I'm gonna slice the icing off the top of the cake. Yay, I got to see it. <laughs> and make a double crochet. Yarn over, pull through to the front for two loop, for three loops. One, two, three, yarn over, go through two, one, two, Yarn over, go through two. One, two. All right. Now I'm gonna chain two. One, two, and we're gonna make a V-stitch. The way you make a V-stitch normally is double crochet, chain one, and then double crochet all back into the same stitch. This pattern calls for a chain two because we're gonna be putting a lot of double crochets into those, into the V-stitches. So we chain two this time to give us a little bit more room to put all those double crochets but you'll see that in the next row. All right, so getting back to what I said, we're making the V-stitch. So in this case, the V-stitch is double crochet, chain two, and then double crochet all back into that same stitch, okay? So I'm gonna yarn over because it's a double crochet. I'm gonna slice the same icing. There was still some left on the top of the cake. And then I'm gonna make another double crochet. Yarn over, pull through to the front for three loops. One, two, three. Yarn over, go through two. One, two. Yarn over, go through two, one, two. And that's my V-stitch. Why do they call it a V-stitch? See how it goes like that? By chaining one or two, whatever you do, it causes those double crochets to kind of go in opposite directions uh, at an angle, and it creates that V, okay? So that's the V-stitch. Remember at the beginning, that's the chain three, which counts for that stitch, and then we chain two more to create that chain two space. Okay, and then we skipped a couple of single crochets down here, and then that next one, we put the V-stitch. And now we're gonna repeat this. So we'll chain two, one, two. We're gonna yarn over to prepare for the next double crochet that we're gonna make, yarn over, okay? And then I'm gonna skip the next two stitches again. Remember, the V-stitch is in this stitch. So when I say next stitches, the next two, I'm talking about that one, that's one, and then that one, that's two. And then in that third one over, that's where I'm gonna crochet my next V-stitch, okay? So I yarned over, skip one, two, and then the third one away, I'll put a V-stitch. A V-stitch for this pattern is a double crochet, chain two, and then yarn over and put a double crochet back in that same stitch, like that, okay? And we're gonna repeat, chain two, skip two, skip one, skip two, and the third one, put our V-stitch. 
chain two, go back in there to create the V-stitch. You guys can slow this down if you need to. Chain two, one, two, skip two, one, two, and the third one away, put your V-stitch. Chain two, go back in there to complete the V-stitch like that. Okay, continue in that manner, and I'll see you at the end. All right, we're at the end. So we chain two, one, two, and then skip the next two, one, two, and in that final single crochet there, that's where we're just gonna put a regular double crochet. No V-stitch at the very end. It should basically match how we started, okay? We started with this chain three, which counted as a double crochet, and we're ending with an actual double crochet. This chain two right there, before that final stitch, matches these two chains there, okay? so. The chain three is the double crochet, and then chain two, and then we get to the V-stitch. Here, V-stitch, chain two, double crochet. All right, so that's row two. We have these V-stitches. It's going to kind of curve and be a little wavy. That's all okay. That's how it should be. All right, so in each of these V-stitches, now we're going to crochet a certain number of double crochet. And the way that we get different petal sizes is by putting fewer or more double crochets in each of those V-stitches. Let's count how many V-stitches we have. We have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight V-stitches. So that means that we could kind of split it up and put, you know, we'll start out, let's just say, with crocheting six double crochet. And maybe I should start row three so you can see what I'm saying. All right, so. Now for this row, we'll chain one, turn our work, and into that very same stitch, this double crochet on the end, the stitch where that chain one is coming out of, we're gonna slice the icing right in there, and we're gonna put a single crochet. So I do not yarn over, I just go right in there, slicing the icing off the top of the cake. Now I yarn over for two loops, yarn over, go through two, one, two. All right, now, in this very first V-stitch, I'm going to immediately start putting the double crochet. I'm going to put six double crochet into that chain two space in the center of the V-stitch. Okay, so yarn over, go in there, and make your six double crochet. That's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, five, six okay all right in the chain two space that separates the two v stitches okay so not the chain two space that creates the v but the one in between the v here's a v here's a v that chain two space we're going to put a single crochet and see how it's going to kind of bring the fan down like that so it'll be a nice even fan before it was kind of hanging up a little bit but when we put the single crochet to single crochet there in between the two V's, it kind of brought it down. Okay, so in the next V stitch, we're gonna put six double crochet. So we're gonna keep that number right for now. So just go immediately to the next V stitch and put your six double crochet, just like you just did in the previous V stitch. That's two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six. Once again, See how it's kind of up? So in this chain two space that is in between the two V stitches, we'll put a single crochet and it brings it down and level like that. Let's do one more where we put six double crochet in the V stitch. So notice we don't chain, we just go immediately to the V and start making our double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, like that, okay? All right, now we're gonna increase, okay? So right now we have petals that are made up of six double crochet, but we want them to be larger, okay? Because we're gonna be rolling it like this, and these petals will be on the inside. So we want the ones that come on the outside to get, you know, gradually larger. So, first of all, let's get this 
cuddle down. So in this chain two space, we know we put a single crochet like that. Now it's level. All right, now we're going to increase to nine double crochet in the V-stitch. Okay, so let's get to it. In the next V-stitch, you're putting nine. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, see now why we put a chain two in between those two double crochet just to have more space but you can see it's a bigger petal okay all right and the next chain two space put a single crochet to make it level okay all right let's do it again in the next one let's put nine one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And in the next chain two space, put a single crochet. Okay. So what do we have? We have three petals with six. One, two, three. And then we went to the nine. So this has nine double crochet. This has nine double crochet. Okay. And then I see I have three more V's, okay? So I'm gonna make one more petal that is composed of nine double crochet. So this one will get nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. And you guys are probably able to guess that I'm going for these last two, these right here, I'm gonna put 12, okay? So that the final two petals are even larger. Okay. And I guess I'll take this opportunity to, even though I really like this color, <laughs> I don't want to change color, but for those of you who want, you know, petals that have different colors, I'm going to show you how to change colors. So let me get my other yarn. So I think this lavender color will look nice, will complement it well. So what I'm going to do is, I like to change colors where I make the single crochet. So I'll go in this chain two space like normal in between the TV stitches and make my single crochet. All right, now I'm going to bring in the other color. I'm just gonna crochet it, hook it, hook the yarn on, pull through like that, and then I'll pull the yarn that I was working with to eliminate that loop. All right, and then I'm going to tie, well, I'll tie a couple of knots. So between this tail and the, the old yarn, so the pink. Just make sure that loop is gone before you tie, okay? So just tie a couple of knots, one, and then two, like that. And now we can cut that pink yarn. This is called peony pink, by the way, if you guys are interested. All right, bye-bye peony pink. I love you, I would have stayed with you, but my viewers want to see me change color, so we'll go to the lavender. All right, so remember, for these last two Vs, they're going to get 12 double crochet. And I'm just going to crochet over these tails, and if I have any excess, I'll just cut it down. So from the single crochet, I go right to the double crochets. So 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, halfway done, seven, eight, nine, I'm trying to 
try to get your tails together so you can crochet over them. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Okay? See I crocheted over the tails? So now I don't need to cut. And you can see it's an even bigger petal than the one that had nine. Alright. Now in the next chain two space, I make my single crochet. And then this final V, I put 12 as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, halfway, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 and 12. All right, and now we're at that chain five. So remember, three stitches count as the double crochet and two are for the chain two space. So you can start at the bottom and count three up. One, two, three. And the third chain up, that's where we're gonna put a single crochet, like that, okay? And this is what we have. It's gonna be round like that. Ah, oh, that would make a beautiful just placement. I like this, but that's not what we're doing today. <laughs> All right, so now you want to chain one. My imagination and creativity is going crazy right now. Cut your yarn and then fasten off. Now we're going to use our dining weaving tapestry needle to weave in a couple of these tails. We want to clean this up a little bit before we bring it all together. So just feed the yarn through the eye of your dining weaving tapestry needle and weave the yarn in through light color. So lavender, weaving in through lavender. All right, in that direction, and then we're gonna take a slightly different path, going back in the opposite direction, like that. Make sure you it's not distorted, so pull it back to its normal size and then cut your yarn without cutting your work. Do the same thing with this beginning tail. Okay, feed it through. And then we're gonna crochet through this row of single crochets. One direction. And if your tail is short, one direction is enough, you can cut it down, but I have enough tail to go back the other way. The reason I say that it's enough is because we're gonna sew this together anyway, so. All right, and then go back in the other direction if you have the tail. The length to do so, and then cut your yarn down without cutting your work. All right, so this is what we have, all right? We're gonna start on the side where we started with the six double crochets on each V. So just a quick recap. One, two, three, the first three V's have six. The next three V's have nine double crochet and the final two V stitches have 12. All right, since we're gonna be sewing down here, we're gonna use this color yarn. So I get to go back to my peony pink, which I'm happy about. I'm just gonna cut some, okay? You don't need much. All right, and you grab your crochet hook or a smaller one, but the same size works if you don't have a smaller one. Hook it on. This is just to attach the yarn. Pull it through like that and then tie a knot. One and then another one, two. This is just to secure it. Okay, so now you guys, this is the fun part. We're going to Put our yarn through the darning weaving tapestry needle one more time. We've been using this darning weaving tapestry needle a lot in this video. Normally we don't use it that much. And you can feed this in here, this shorter tail, because we're going to roll like this. Or you can cut it down, whatever you want. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to feed it behind like that. Alright, and what we're going to do is we're going to roll. So just kind of roll it like that. Just roll a little bit, and then with this dining weaving tapestry needle, notice where your yarn is, it's over here, so I'm gonna start over here and come out through that row of single crochet on this side, like that. Then I'm gonna go just a little bit over and go back to the other side. So normally it's two passes, and then I roll more, okay? So I'm gonna roll more of this that way, 
so that the yarn is still exposed. I don't want to roll too much because then my yarn gets buried in the roll, see? So I only go just a little bit where the yarn is still exposed over there. And then from that side, I come over to this side. That's one pass. And then I go a little bit more this way and go back over to that side. Second pass. And then I roll a little bit more like that. Once again, my yarn is still exposed. Start over here, go through single crochet this way, one pass, and then I go back over a little bit more, going back to the other side. Second pass. Okay? Now I roll a little bit more. From this side, I come over and then bring it towards me. First pass. And then a little bit over. I go over for the second pass, going back to the other side. Try to come through that row of single crochet. And by the way, you guys, this doesn't have to be super precise, but I'm trying to explain it with enough detail so you get it. I'm rolling a little bit more. This yarn is still exposed. I didn't go roll it so much that it covered it like that, right? No, just right there, still exposed from this side over through the row of single crochet, okay, to this side. And then go over a little bit that way. Because we're basically trying to sew the row of single crochet together. Back over, second pass. Roll a little bit more. Okay, from this side. See how it's coming from that side. Wherever you can get in and then just come out on this side through the row of single crochet. And I caught it, so pull the pedal out. And now pull. And then remember, make your way over a little bit more to the next single crochet and just get in. It's going to get t a little bit harder to get through it the more you, the farther along we get because we've weaved in so many times. So we're running into tangled yarn. Okay, roll a little bit more. All right, we're almost done. From this side to that side, first pass, go over a little bit to the next single crochet and go over back to that side. All right, roll a little bit more. <laughs> this is funny. All right, from this side, just get in wherever you can. If it doesn't get go through, then try it a different location. You'll find an opening. Just be patient. That side, all right, and then over Loop it that way and then go back to the other side. Like that. Okay. Alright. A little bit more. From this side over. Make sure you just the, the the goal is to catch this new area of single crochets that you haven't sewn yet. Okay. Like that. And then go over a little bit and come back to the other side. That's what's attaching it's right okay roll a little bit more so from this side wherever you can get in try to find the single crochet all right i found it and then i'm going to go to the end and come out on the other side like that okay and i just want to make sure that my pedal is attached okay so i'm going to go over one more time from this side, wherever I can get in. And I'm just want to grab this little corner there just to make sure it's attached. All right, and then I'm going to come from the top, go through the, that corner again. And then I'm going to, there's a loop right here. I'm going to go through like that just to tie a knot. And that's it. All right, you guys. So just want to point out a few things before I go. All right, so. This pedal, this pedal, and that pedal. So one, two, three. Those are the three pedals that were made with or by crocheting six double crochet in those three V-stitches. The next three have the nine, okay, double crochets in the V-stitches. And then obviously the final two are easy to see because they're a different color, but also um, they're bigger, okay? And those are the two that have 12, okay? So you can kind of see with this flower, where each of the petals, you know, where they lie, 
um, where they appear. If you want wanted to start your color earlier, then you could make, say you made three of them in that lilac or lavender color, I think it's lilac, um, then that means that if you made the last three V-stitches lilac or lavender, this would be purple, okay? So you can kind of play around. By the way, the row with the double crochets, you know, the petals, um, remember the other one? Let me get grab it right quick. If you wanted to do something like this, then all you have to do is start another color and make slip stitches, okay? Um, into, you know, each stitch, and it will give it that sort of border. It looks like this from that point of view, and on the back side, it looks like that, or it looks like chains. All right, and then also, say, see how the appearance of this one looks slightly different than that one? You can always kind of rotate these petals so that they kind of fall how you want them to, like that, okay? Just to make it more like the flower that you want it to look like. But yeah, this is how you make flowers. And as I said, in next week's video, I'm gonna show you uh, one application of them. I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna be applying it to. You'll have to stay tuned. Um, but if you just want them to, you know, be on the table as a decor or whatever, um, you don't need to keep these tails. You can cut those down after you, you know, make your knot. And then it can just sit on the table. But no, I think these are beautiful, especially if you choose the right colors. You can use variegated yarn. Um, and, you know, they would look really beautiful. Some flowers are variegated flowers, so, you know, it's fitting. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you like this Mother's Day gift idea. Um, sorry, this video is a little bit longer, but I want to give you a lot of detail, especially when it came to the sewing portion of it because I know that can be confusing for beginners. All right, guys, that's it for this video. You know I'll see you in the next one. In the meantime, happy crocheting.